We're so excited to have your friend and, and connection from Casillas Guitar. So I'll let you introduce, introduce him. Of course. Well, thanks again for having us. It's so exciting to be here and in this such a special place here in Nashville and with uh, such a good friend and mm -hmm. someone that it's really like uh, someone that really helps the guitar community in so many different ways. So it's <laughs> very exciting to be here today uh, and, and sharing all that with you guys. I want to introduce to all of you uh, my dear friend here, Casillas, João Casillas. First name is João, last name Casillas. You can find also his name on this headstock right here. <laughs> um, a very talented guitar maker from Brazil. Um, a, a gentleman, a great guy, and also like just a very talented uh, human being. And it's exciting to be here today to talk about guitar, to play with, uh, with you, Steve, and talk a little bit about guitar making and, and learn a little bit from João here, that, who has a lot of experience playing guitar, uh, making guitars. And, and uh, well, you guys can see a, a picture is better than a thousand words. Yes, yeah. right? <laughs> just gorgeous. How'd you, how did you get started making guitars? I started, but first of all, it's a pleasure to be here, Steve. <laughs> Through Paulo, I got to know your work. And it's a privilege going all the way from Brazil to be here at Grunz Guitars. Oh. It's, it's just unimaginable. It's, years ago, I would not imagine being here. So it's a privilege. <laughs> Thank you very much. How, how long have you been here in the U.S.? I have been here just for a seminar mm -hmm. and a couple of, couple of weeks mm -hmm. now. So, and, uh, but I've been here uh, in 2008 to study luthery, guitar mm -hmm. making wow. in Michigan. Yes. And uh, that's where it started. Mm -hmm. And it, I got there by accident. I was trying before that to fix my guitar. <laughs> my whole beloved Stratocaster guitar. Yeah. And uh, I got into Luthery by accident because I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't even know how people made guitars at first yeah. place. Yeah. So by the, 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 the look, by, by, by trying to improve my own playing mm -hmm. on the Strat, I got to know Luthery mm -hmm. School. And then uh, I, I got the opportunity to study abroad in the United States in mm -hmm. 2008. That mm -hmm. That's where it started. Mm -hmm. From that on, I got bit by the archdog bug, mm -hmm. so this guitar just has some sort of a enchantment. It, it, it lured me into the the world of carving the plates and making the instruments by hand. So that's why I'm here today. It, it, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous instrument. Tell us about this particular instrument okay. that uh, Paulo's playing here. Okay. It is just uh, uh, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is the Jazz Elite model, mm -hmm. which is a my interpretation of a classic. Italian American guitar. Mm -hmm. So uh, we come from the we we had the tradition of Gibson, mm -hmm. the father of all the archtops. Mm -hmm. But some makers, most most from Italy and uh, the immigrants that came to New York, they perfected their skills mm -hmm. by trying to make their own name recognition. Mm -hmm. But not the name recognition quest, but mm -hmm. to make guitars, right? Yeah. And uh, I got really inspired by that line of work. And uh, my interpretation of that is like uh, good, f uh, good, and a big reference to me, which is Bob Benedetto. Oh, yeah, so beautiful. So most of the lines I, like you guys, borrow some lines from other musicians, mm -hmm. and um, to make your own sauce, right? Mm -hmm. To make your own recipe, mm -hmm. I do as well. So I'm very happy to say that Bob Benedetto and other makers really inspired me to create this. This is an archtop guitar. Uh, it's a true acoustic archtop guitar, which means it has no center block, mm -hmm. so it's not semi-hollow, it's full hollow body guitar. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it developed making a fast forward from a 1920s uh, Gibson L5, mm -hmm. and it lived to, to, to receive the, the marvel of technology that is the electric electrifying. Mm -hmm. So it, it lived to receive the electric humbucker. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it was the first instrument to receive, uh, uh, to, to have its way onto the electronics right. and being played through an amplifier to yeah. be heard in rehearsals and big bands and so on. Yeah. So this is a fully carved instrument, a hand carved guitar, handmade instrument. And it's made of spruce top, European spruce top, uh, big leaf maple back and sides, and also two piece flamed maple neck from the Pennsylvania. Wow! And just the, look at that. That yeah. is gorgeous. That's something to look at, right? And the color is a burgundy burst, which is a has a red shading mm -hmm. uh, that does not make the wood opaque. So mm -hmm. you can see the figure of the wood, yeah. but you can also feel see it 
became more valuable by adding uh, just the subtle nuances of color through mm -hmm. it. And uh, most of the, the black parts are ebony. Mm -hmm. So Madagascar ebony for fingerboard, pick guard, and all the mounting parts, the pick guard, the, the um, tailpiece, the bridge, and so on. Mm -hmm. Wow. What a gorgeous instrument. About how long does it take to make an instrument like this? It takes about 300 to 400 hours. So it's a labor of love. Uh, you cannot rush the process. Yeah. And I make just a few of them each year. So it's a very tailor-made uh, hands or hands-on work. Is it just you or do you have some helpers that are working you? I do have you? I do have two people working with me and also Renata, she takes care of the, the financial part mm -hmm. of the business. And uh, I have Giovanni and Valdir. Mm -hmm. Giovanni is my personal assistant mm -hmm. and Valdir is the finishing expert. Mm -hmm. So we I am very glad to say that we have more people mm -hmm. on the on the, the work because they are really great. They're really talented as well. Wow. I mean, I don't know. I don't know where to begin. So, so how much of this is done by machine, and how much of this is just hand? Oh, uh, pretty much work. is all hand work. That is uh, just gorgeous. The tuners, yeah, the tuners work. are made on the factory. Mm -hmm. The pickups are also made by a custom pickup maker in Brazil. Mm -hmm. He makes uh, custom pickups to to design a voice for this guitar. Mm -hmm. But despite that, all the parts are hand carved, handmade. Mm -hmm. Even the small ebony parts are made by hand. Mm -hmm. So it really comes from a blank piece of wood uh, to turning into the guitar. Where do you get your wood from? Tell I us about the wood. Are, are, what yeah, what are you using? The, uh, the wood is very important, Steve. Uh, it's the, the, the fundamentals of making a good guitar, I would say, starts with good wood. Mm -hmm. And I source my woods from different places, Europe mm -hmm. uh, for the tops, and also, also North, North America mm -hmm. for Sitka spruce, by mm -hmm. example, it's an excellent spruce. Mm -hmm. uh, for the back and sides, the Pacific Northwest has the best maple mm -hmm. for, that, uh, for that use. And for the neck, it's also maple, but it comes from the east, so eastern maple, the red leaf. Mm -hmm. Harder type of maple, more uh, resistant to warping, mm -hmm. and uh, has also the proper acoustic qualities and uh, the density to work as a neck. And also has to withstand a lot of torque from the strings, right? Right, right, right. Usually jazz boxes, they play with heavy, heavy yeah. gauge strings. So yeah. 12s and 13s yeah. are and up. So pretty much uh, th that has to do a lot of good quality wood selection. Yeah. And all the ebony parts are got, uh, I got from Africa, so mm -hmm. resource, um, responsibly harvested woods. So all the suppliers that supply is violin family makers, violas, cellos, mm -hmm. they also supply the best ebony wow. to, to these instruments. So it's a kind of a cousin of the violin, I would say, and a more modern take on wow. it. Do you do different sizes? Are there different types of guitars that you're doing? Yes, uh, this is a 16 inch mm -hmm. arch top and two and a half inches body depth. Which I like, I like the thinner body, it's just oh. comfortable. I'm a smaller guy, and okay. but just, it's just easier to play. Okay, that the thinner body really makes sense if you are moving around an airport, mm -hmm. smaller cases or gig bags, yeah. and also it's more stage friendly. Yeah as far as feedbacks are concerned. Yeah. These guitars, they're prone to feedback because mm -hmm. they're acoustic instruments, right? Mm -hmm. But if you play some right parts on the chessboard, mm -hmm. you're gonna have less of, a, less of an issue yeah. as far as playing them electrically. And that's why the, the 16 inches uh, is the best option for that. Mm -hmm. I also do 17 inches body, mm -hmm. which is for the more traditional jazz players that yeah. wanted really a floating pickup, traditional bebop yeah. sound, you know, mm -hmm. that really open, airy, wooden mm -hmm. tone, you know. But most of the players and collector, they are gravitating towards this. The yeah. 16 inch thinner body is just really nice. Uh, that's what I like doing the most nowadays. Beautiful. It, where are you located in Brazil? Are you in yes, uh, I Sao am, Paulo or Yes, where? I am located in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I have mm -hmm. a shop there. And I've been doing this for almost 20 years now. So, uh, and I still like doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Good. We, uh, of course, life uh, brings you moments of 
uh, scarcity, moments of joy and yeah. other challenges. But I still look in the mirror and consider myself lucky to be able to do what I like. Yes. So. Wow. <laughs> well, it's, it's an honor having you with us and with such a gorgeous instrument. Thank um, you. It's an honor to be here. Yeah. Um, Paulo, let's talk about what, you, what you, you've been up to lately. The, you're at, uh, teaching in Belmont. The semester has started, getting yes, ready to start. just started on Wednesday, um, mm -hmm. like almost a week ago, and it's busy. Yeah. It's, but just like João, it's busy. We have the challenges, but I love, I love every minute of it. Every, you know, like uh, welcoming new students, mm -hmm. seeing my current students coming back to campus. Mm -hmm. I taught lessons this morning. Mm -hmm. It's great to see mm -hmm. them, and, and uh, they are eager. They, they want to get better, and, mm -hmm. and it's very inspiring. Like, I, I, I always feel that I learn just as much as them when I'm teaching because it's and, inspiring. And you had a busy summer. Yes. You, yes. Were, you were out and about quite a bit. Tell us about all the great things you did over the summertime. Yes. Yeah, so I finished the semester here at Belmont and then um, finished the semester in May. And then I took the month of May to actually finish uh, a book that we can talk a little bit later okay. about that book. Uh, but then I, I traveled to Brazil mm -hmm. and I spent almost 50 days in Brazil. Uh, stayed uh, stayed with my family. My mm -hmm. my parents still live there, mm -hmm. and pretty much every summer I go down there to spend time with them. And it was a good blend of um, vacation with my family and work. Mm -hmm. So I actually gave a few concerts in Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a dual partner uh, who lives in Brazil, who's a great uh, classical and uh, steel string guitarist. Mm -hmm. So we played a few concerts. Uh, in Brazil, we played in the southern tip of Brazil, in Porto Alegre, close to Uruguay. Mm -hmm. We played in Sao Paulo, a couple concerts. João actually came to one of the concerts while mm -hmm. we were there, which was very nice. Very nice. Um, we, uh, we recorded, we have mm -hmm. some recordings coming up uh, of, of this duo. I also give clinics uh, mm -hmm. for guitar students and uh, just jazz students in general, like a jazz combo kind of, kind of uh, workshops. Mm -hmm. And it was great. And I made it back right at the beginning of August and got really busy with other projects at Belmont and outside of Belmont. Uh, have a lot of gigs coming up, uh, mm -hmm. uh, mostly jazz gigs, also some pop rock mm -hmm. gigs, and it's good. It's uh, it's, uh, it's ex exciting time. It's busy, but I'm I'm happy. And you played with actually a, a group that that I had 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 the wonderful opportunity with Musical on Musical to. Uh, uh, Musical on Musical is a wonderful organization that goes out and trains uh, 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 musicians in uh, different countries, primarily church musicians in different countries. And uh, we have, uh, I've not been with them when they've been to Brazil, but I went with them when they went to uh, Santiago, Chile, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Peru, and Lima, and Arequipa, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yes. And where did you go yeah. with them? We went in March, and it was really great. Mm -hmm. it was, uh, we went to Argentina, mm -hmm. went to Chaco, Argentina, mm -hmm. the city where Christian is from, mm -hmm. one of the directors of the Musical yeah. Musical. Good friend, and yeah. Good friend, and uh, he says hi. Yeah. Uh, and we all need to get together uh, yes. at some point. Uh, yeah, he lives in, in Sweden, uh, yeah. but he, well, we went, we spent a week there in Chaco, uh, teaching classes and playing for the community, meeting lots of people, and it was just such a special moment. I came back to Nashville with my heart really full. Yeah really did i and and i stopped in brazil for two days to see my parents during that trip <laughs> stopped in brazil and spent a week in argentina and came back to the us it was great it is um it is a joy to pour out musically and to help others mm -hmm. once you start helping folks that have no way of helping you back that's the good stuff yes absolutely. that's the good stuff when you start doing that Mm -hmm. And uh, so musical, 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 uh, musical, musician to musician. Uh, it's an amazing organization. If you get a chance to check them out, um, they were not doing uh, events for a while, and now they're firing back up again and have a lot of things uh, uh, in the works. So. Yes, and then just, yeah, there's a lot of new things coming up, uh, new projects, and hopefully maybe we can try to... Uh, uh, have their Instagram uh, on there at some point for, for yeah. you guys to check it out because they do beautiful work like helping people from all over the world and I'm really really happy uh, to to be part of that and, and yeah. help if anything I can so it's a, it's a great group of people. If you guys have any questions uh, about um, 
everything that we're talking about tonight, please don't hesitate to put them in into our chat uh, for uh, Casillas Guitars or uh, for Paolo. Um, I would like to play that guitar Absolutely. if possible. Absolutely. Um, let me mm -hmm. put this away. Nice. And uh, oh. mm -hmm. it is just so such a gorgeous yes. instrument. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's light. Yeah. Huh? I like that. And I can hold this one also just yeah. so we can. Uh, jazz machine you can just kind of feel it was made to play uh such a beautiful tune gosh this is gorgeous the i'm sure the cameras will not do it justice i'll try and get a few pictures of this guitar before we uh uh before we uh go and i'll try and put those on our facebook page so um uh john is asking how many guitars um casillas can you build in one in one year oh it's a very limited production um we ba we basically achieve 12 uh, 18 to 22 instruments a year are they special ordered beforehand they're all com custom commission guitars wow i rarely i seldom have the opportunity to make one for myself mm -hmm. <laughs> or fly for my showroom mm -hmm. and uh, but so because i'm so backlogged mm -hmm. due to custom work mm -hmm. and but I, it's a joy i uh, we make usually 18 to 22 and i also try to always keep pushing the envelope as far as creativity is concerned. Mm -hmm. to, yeah. to, to not do the same, you know, Steve. Yeah. Uh, once you get into just cranking a lever, you, yeah. yeah, it's not there anymore. Yeah. But that's why, it wa that was, wasn't the reason uh, that got me into this yeah. craft. Exactly. It was to be creative, to express myself. Yeah. And mostly and most importantly is to make tools for creative expression. Yeah. Uh, if this would not happen if there wasn't for the tool behind the guitar. Yeah, yeah. What yeah, we yeah. experienced here. Yeah. So it's a joy for me too. 
you know, you don't realize George Gruen, who I was talking with earlier today, um, you know, you don't realize that the instrument that you play, I never really thought about instruments until I really came to Nashville. You know, this, this guitar will have a life far beyond me. And uh, it, it, uh, uh, it's a tool that we use to create music and uh, express ourselves. But um, you, you kind of mistakenly think that, you know, this is mine and I will, this will be forever mine. And it's not. This guitar will be making music with whatever player it finds itself in in years to come, and, and uh, it's really a beautiful thing that you that you think of that that uh, your your guitar, your music, uh, will live. Your work as an artist of doing this, uh, it has a very long life. I hope. Yeah, yeah, a very long, wonderful life. Just a gorgeous. Uh, tell us about the pickup that you you are putting in here. What a what a beautiful sound. Uh, thank you. Uh, the pickup is some sort of a mystery because I never know the recipe. I always try to the pickup maker mm -hmm. with impressions, mm -hmm. and every single pickup is different from one another. Mm -hmm. So for this guitar, I wanted a imagine a needle mm -hmm. where when one side of that needle it uh, it's an acoustic side, mm -hmm. and on the other is the electric. Mm -hmm. I tried to put the needle right in the middle, mm -hmm. so it would have a right mix between electric and acoustic qualities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this has a, if I'm not wrong, this has a Alnico 4 magnet, mm -hmm. which is really balanced. Mm -hmm. uh, the Alnico 2 is warmer, the Alnico 5 is sharper, mm -hmm. stronger. Mm -hmm. And the Alnico 4, it has a more balanced EQ. Mm -hmm. And uh, around 2, uh, it's a, a middle output pickup. So, mm -hmm. uh, and jazz guitars, they're very common nowadays to use Alnico 5 and strong output pickups. Mm -hmm. They will not translate the sound into a heavy metal, mm -hmm. crunchy sound, but they read and they connect, they, they talk really well with the acoustic qualities. Yeah. And bo uh, but for example, if a guy play, plays really soft, mellowy lines, mm -hmm. warmer, in any, perhaps wants a warmer tone, mm -hmm. I would definitely go for PAF style, Alnico 2, lower output humbuckers. Yeah. And in cases of floating pickups, it mm. gets even sweeter sounding uh, humbuckers, you know, mini humbuckers. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, uh, Keith is saying, have you had the pleasure of working with a left-handed customer? Yes, I did. <laughs> the, the pleasure for the player, but it's hard for the maker. <laughs> because you, know, you don't know how to play it, right? Yeah. And the setup is a challenge because you don't know if it's good enough. Mm -hmm. It's really good to be some sort of a player when making guitars. Mm -hmm. But when you're making a lefty, it happened, I think I made about five so far. Mm -hmm. I wish I could make them more of it, but is very challenging mm -hmm. because it only comes to the part where the player comes to try the guitar, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, oof, I mean, I got lucky enough. That most of them liked it, but we also I also separate the time to do the fine tuning on the presence of the player. Mm -hmm. If I have to ship the guitar to another country or uh, another state ab abroad, mm -hmm. I really have long conversations with the customer to see really we fine tune those impressions yeah. that he will like me to have technically put into the instrument. I mean, the neck feels wonderful. I love the. Uh you know the radius of the neck and thank you you got the flat wounds on it here so this this thing was made for <laughs> uh jazz playing in that wow okay uh, we better better take a break hey let's give away something here um uh we don't have our giveaway list so we're just going to pick somebody so someone is about to win a groon guitar mug be the first one on your block wake up in the morning Grab your coffee out of a Groon guitar mug. Someone is about to win this. Um, e Igor Simus? Igor Simus. It's a guy from Brazil. <laughs> oh, he's a guy from Brazil. I don't know how we can get this to Brazil. Maybe we'll... Cassius can take it to Brazil. Cassius can take it to Brazil. Good. That's funny. We'll do that. Okay. okay Igor. Igor, congratulations. You've won this. Um, Great. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful oh great 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 okay um uh, someone is asking um about truss rods we'll get to that in a second i wanted to let you guys also know 
Uh, as we're b taking a little bit of a break here, uh, Paulo and I are going to play another tune in a, in a minute to celebrate uh, some Brazilian music. I, I feel a little inadequate with everybody here is from Brazil, and I'm, I'm from San Antonio, Texas. So um, we'll try and do our best. <clears throat> but we've got our fingerstyle retreat coming up October 26th through the 29th. Um, and if you want to get information on that, you can go to fingerstyleretreat.com. And uh, excited to have Thomas Lieb with us. Excited to have uh, Walter Rodriguez Jr., um, who's okay. going to be with us as well, who's, I believe, originally from Brazil. Yeah, I, uh, the name sounds like he's it. in He's in Miami now, and amazing jazz guitarist and uh, guitar ranger and things like that. So uh, Walter's going to be with us. Uh, Bill Cooley, legendary sideman here in uh, Nashville. He's going to be with us, uh, working on getting some other guests as well. And we've got, of the 24 slots that we have, we probably have 14 or 15 of them filled at this point. This, it's been a, a sellout every year for the last four or five years. So <clears throat> if you're interested in, in being a part of that, uh, check, check out fingerstyleretreat.com. It's a different kind of event from our summer conference. This is um, big stone fireplaces, big leather couches, and you're five feet away from some of the best fingerstyle players on the planet. And uh, Julio is behind the camera here. And uh, Julio has been there the last year and probably be again there this year. We've got a wonderful plan for your life to be with us at the fingerstyle retreat. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, he's in uh, to have uh, mm -hmm. a true master work on your guitar and set up your guitar while you're there. So. It's three, three and a half days. We all stay there. We all eat together. We all uh, are going to these workshops together. And it is a very relaxed, fun time of just getting away from life for a few days and getting to be with your favorite, uh, um, I don't want to say hobby, but your favorite activity. So if you're interested in learning about fingerstyle guitar, you don't have to be an amazing player to come. It's not, there's not a, it's not a, 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 a you know, it's not American Idol or anything, you know, we're just trying to learn. And I like, I like getting where you have the player and the learner close to each other. You take them off this, Paula, we'll have to get you involved with this thing. Mm -hmm. um, um, you get them off the stage, you get them away from the lights and the band and all that sort of stuff. And you just get to sit them right next to you and you go, hey, what are you doing? And it's, I love that dynamic. I love it from the learner perspective. I love it from the artist perspective. So um, it's great. It's a wonderful experience. If you're interested, check it out, fingerstyleretreat.com, and you can get all the information on it. And uh, we will, uh, oh, uh, the, um, the early registration discount is coming up. Um, the deadline for that is September 1st. So if you are interested in coming, don't hesitate because the price is gonna go up 100 bucks uh, after September 1st. So there you go. Um, let, do you want to play another tune? Sure. Let's mm -hmm. play another tune. Mm -hmm. I will give this can hold glorious mm -hmm. instrument back to you. Thank you. And um, um, maybe I'll grab my goat in here. Um, mm -hmm. Tuning, that's a good idea. Um, I played a three-hour solo job on Friday night downtown in Nashville and uh, for a wedding rehearsal. I would love to tell you who it was for, but I signed a non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> you would know who they were, but I would love to tell you, but I would probably get sued or whatever. But anyway, we, ended, <laughs> we played a great, it was a lot of, man, it was a lot of fun. Just um, three hour wedding re uh, rehearsal dinner. I ended up probably playing two and a half hours of that solo guitar um, with this guitar and this amp and uh, my Hendrickson amp and it just sounded sounded beautiful and uh, it's a great little event and nothing to test your fingers out like playing two hours straight, you know, that was great. So it, you play everything you know and then you turn around and play it again. So it was a lot of fun. I love those solo jobs. Some of my most fun have been me playing a solo guitar job with people that aren't listening to me at all. That's just some <laughs> of the best. It's just enjoyable creating an atmosphere. I love that. But played 
way too many restaurants in my younger days mm -hmm. to uh, to folks and just creating an atmosphere. I love it. So anyway, since uh, we're, we're kind of celebrating Brazilian guitar, I thought we'd play a little bit of Antonio Carlos Jobim. And so I was going to pick some of the standard classics. And I thought, well, what fun is that? And so I picked something that I don't normally play. And uh, uh, How Insensitive is the name of the song. And uh, so we're going to do our best with it. Insensatez. Insensatez. Yes. Insensatez. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good job. Yeah, yeah. Good job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did take Spanish uh, for a year and a half. <laughs> that you does know? help a little. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think the teacher was more impressed that I could play guitar. Because uh, yes. I would play guitar. She'd go, oh, I play something Spanish. She'd go, oh. Uh, yeah. I, think that got me, I think that got me through that class more than my speaking did. Uh, so, all right. Um, you do the melody? Oh, I'll take the melody. Okay. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm.
Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. Wow. We need to we need to do this more often. We need to do more of that. Yes. <laughs> We've known each other for a little bit. But yeah, we haven't today really played was together. actually the first time. So yeah, we've played uh, together. It's great. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Um, okay, we did have a couple of questions here. Uh, one was about uh, truss rods. I don't, it's, uh, I'll get it here in a second there. Um, tell us about truss rods in, in, in this instrument. Is there a truss rod in this Yes, instrument? it is. Okay. There, there is. Okay. Uh, truss rods are a um, uh, um, thing that counteract the string torque. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it may be two-way, one-way, two-rod, one-rod, mm -hmm. uh, but it's just something that is installed inside the neck mm -hmm. to counteract for the string mm -hmm. a pull. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of deformation in the wood occurring after you uh, add the tension to yeah. the neck. And the truss rods are also uh, a way to um, counteract that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it serves as an adjustment mechanism, uh, mechanism mm -hmm. also. So you can uh, really dial in, fine-tune the action for the player. If he wants a little bit more stiff action, mm -hmm. plays heavy notes, you know, mm -hmm. you can leave it a little loose intentionally yeah. and if he plays soft very fast melodic lines mm -hmm. you can also uh, adjust it really straight to straighten up the neck and have a better feel you know the, the strings may buzz the strings may um, uh, feel the, the the adjustments a little harder mm -hmm. on them but it's it's a very it's a matter of pretty much finding the right luthier to yeah. do that fine tune so Actually, there is one thing interesting about uh, yeah, the, those <coughs> guitars that um, I'm a player that um, I play classical guitar and mm -hmm. I'm used to like high action instruments. And mm -hmm. but when I play like an arch top, I really wanted an instrument. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want an instrument with high, low action mm -hmm. that I could play light and have, you know, everything feeling really comfortable. And uh, Juan, this and we can uh, show them a little bit. This is actually my guitar. This is Juan's guitar, mm -hmm. and this is mine, of course. This is the younger sister mm -hmm. of this one. <laughs> and and the beauty is that the action is like so low and so comfortable, and you still get a great sound. Yeah. Because it's always that equation, right? If the string is too low, you lose sound a lot of time. Mm -hmm. But if the string is too high, uh, sometimes it, it's difficult to play. And I was talking to Julio earlier today about uh, one thing about, about your guitars. And that he, he knows his yeah, stuff, right? He, he yeah. knows his stuff, yeah. absolutely. Is that like for someone like, like a collector or someone that are looking more for the like, artistic side of the guitar, right? It's such high quality attention to the detail, mm -hmm. but also for the musician yeah, yeah. that needs a good instrument to yeah. play, yeah. that you actually you play and you feel good about it. So you get this combination and you look at his clients he has both like he has those people that are collectors and but he also has the musicians that just yeah. love to play the instrument and so it's uh and it's a rare find yeah. you know you don't find that on a lot of guitars because uh, it's just a comfortable and, and easy to to set up well when he sets it up it's a little bit easier because he uh -huh. really knows what he's doing but uh like my guitar is actually extremely comfortable this one is extremely comfortable to play with 12s yeah oh yeah oh yeah mm -hmm. And I would venture to say, I don't know guitar building, I've never built a guitar, but I would say an arch top is probably one of the harder styles to venture to try and do as a builder. It's just an electric, just seems to have a regular standard electric, you know, a parts and, and you could put it together, but an arch top, boy, you really have to have a, a level of high expertise to be able to put something together like that. There are many challenges in, in uh, more simple instruments as well, Steve. Yeah. But uh, the carving part, the, you know, mm -hmm. fine tuning the plates and getting the topography right, uh, all the transitions, yeah. they play a role aesthetically mm -hmm. and also they play, play a role acoustically. Yeah. When you recurve the plates, that's where you activate the arch top sound. Yeah. So I would not say it's harder. Uh, it has many of its own particular challenges, mm -hmm. like the steel string, a very high-end high steel string also yeah. has many, many challenges. But, uh, it, it, you know, um, it's a little uh, more time-consuming to work on top and back. Yeah. Only two braces inside the guitar. Wow. But boy, these braces are hard to, to install, yeah. you know. Yeah. They got to conform to all the, the variations inside, so... Yeah, I mean, they're beautiful. I, 
but I since I just steered my wheel into this direction, mm -hmm. I think it got easier because I'm so passion driven, you yeah. know. Yeah. I, if you are interested in learning more about uh, these amazing instruments, Casillas Guitars. Yes, CasillasGuitars.com.br or yeah. at Instagram is at Casillas Guitars. Yeah, and I've got I've got the link in our YouTube description down below, so um, you can you can always catch that as well. Uh, Keith is asking, will you ever create a full acoustic guitar? Have I, you ever created a full acoustic? Yes, guitar? Yes, acoustic arch top. Uh, um, I hope. Yeah, I mean, right? Sure. I'm uh, sure. It, uh, yes, I did, mm -hmm. and it's. I love that instrument mm -hmm. because the customer just gave me a blank, a white check, mm -hmm. a blank check, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to do whatever I'd like to do on that mm -hmm. instrument. No compromises on the electric side. Yeah. So I just uh, instead of choosing the maple for the neck, I chose mahogany, mm -hmm. which is a lighter tone wood mm -hmm. and very very resonant. Mm -hmm. And I also carved the plates very thin. To the to the edge of just yeah. under uh, withstanding the string torque, mm -hmm. and uh, that was a lovely arch top. I am making one more for Sweden right now, mm -hmm. and uh, I wish I had more courageous people trying to <laughs> <laughs> dive deep dive into the acoustic arch top world. Good, 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 good. Um, okay, if you have any last minute questions, uh, let me know. Our producer is trying to find that. Um, um, we, while he's looking, let's give something else away. Um, I want to give a Groon guitar hat, baseball hat away from, this is their new version of it. I love these hats. These are good looking hats. All right, pick a good one, Stephen. Come on. Come on. Don't go too far back because sometimes they're, they're off getting a sandwich and we lose them. Good. Peg. Peg Goodman. <laughs> Peg, you have just won a Groon Guitar baseball hat. Congratulations, Peg. Peg's one of our regulars. She's at all of our conferences. Been such a wonderful support to our guitar family and to me. And uh, just a uh, sweet, sweet part of our family. Peg, you know the drill. Send me your information at uh, service at guitargathering.com. And, and, and uh, Igor, well, I don't have to, you don't have to do that because I'll just give I'll it to you. I'll bring it to Igor. He's a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be more than happy to. <laughs> good, 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 good. Well, we'll do that. Um, uh, John is saying, uh, what was the most challenging, um, what was the most challenge to build an arch top guitars in Brazil? I, perhaps he's referring to what is the bigger cha biggest challenge or how challenging it is to build arch tops in mm -hmm. Brazil. Perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I think so. Perhaps mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sourcing the materials. Yeah. Uh, this is a very exotic guitar mm -hmm. concerning materials, Steve, mm -hmm. because we in Brazil we have beautiful and wonderful selection of tone woods. Mm -hmm. Uh, very prized woods we mm -hmm. can find in Brazil. Brazilian mm -hmm. rosewood, mahogany, cedar. Mm -hmm. And this guitar is pretty much all from other countries and mm -hmm. not from Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, despite the fact that I use a tail block and a head block made of Brazilian mahogany, mm -hmm. everybody else is from another, every, every part is made from another continent. So wow. I would say arch tops are a niche thing. Yeah. They are. They were very popular in the 80s, the 90s. Mm -hmm. George Benson, yeah, you yeah. know, the good, uh, the good names like uh, Jim Hall, mm -hmm. um, guys that used to play the Aquistos and the Angelicos back yeah, in yeah, the yeah. heyday, you know. Yeah, yeah. But now it is more uh, becoming a, a niche thing, and uh, that's the big challenge because you have less makers, yeah. and less makers mean less competition. But this is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. You would think competition is a bad thing, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you would see you, you have to share to divide too many of the ac attention mm -hmm. of the customer. But I would like to have more builders. Mm -hmm. I encourage people to to do arch tops, mm -hmm. just to 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 make the thing happen more. Yeah. To put it again, uh, to be to to place a really um, uh, to place them out on the map. Yeah, you know, I yeah. think it's a beautiful and a and the versatile instrument as yeah. well. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I would say the challenge is pretty much that. Good, good. Paolo, before we close out the show, you had you have written a book. Tell us about your book and and uh, all of the 
um, wonderful things that it covers. All right. So, um, yeah, I've, uh, that's my third book. Mm -hmm. um, the first one was a, a classical guitar book for, for uh, people who do not play classical guitar. Mm -hmm. For people who play steel string and, mm -hmm. and jazz to kind of get a little bit more connected with the, the language of classical guitar and mm -hmm. to help you learn how to read. My second book is a sight reading book. Mm -hmm. And most of these books, they were developed to use at Belmont. So mm -hmm. all Belmont students use that. Mm -hmm. That was my initial drive. But yeah. now, after that, I had people asking and I ended up uh, putting them up on Amazon. And mm -hmm. I believe Stephen uh, put a link there for those who are interested. Um, so those two are already out mm -hmm. uh, and available. This one here that I'm going to show you, uh, this is the brand new one that uh, will be out in a few weeks. And here's an interesting thing, because mm -hmm. this picture mm -hmm. is actually from Jean Cassis. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, 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 it's a guitar that's uh, like very similar to mine, this mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. uh, but he had this really nice picture of the fretboard on his Instagram. And I gave him a call, hey, do you authorize me to use your picture? Yeah, because yeah, it was yeah. such a beautiful picture. And it's a single line improvisation for guitar. Uh, mapping the fretboard yeah. for you to learn the fretboard and, and this picture of the fretboard I thought yeah. was nice. Uh, so that's what it covers, it started with cage system and, and scales, pentatonics, modes, mm. uh, everything related to a single line playing mm -hmm. on the guitar. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it should be out on Amazon pretty soon mm -hmm. uh, for those who are interested. And then uh, the guitar program at Belmont, we all the students uh, are, are using now. And, mm -hmm. and this has input from uh, f at least five or six of Belmont guitar faculty. Mm -hmm. So they, they were very helpful. Um, they all reviewed the book for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so we could all use in our program. So I feel very blessed that I, uh, you know, had the opportunity to write this book, but also to have uh, good friends mm -hmm. that were interested in helping me out and giving me great advice and to make it as good as it could be. So I'm, uh, I'm very, very excited about that. Well. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as soon as we get the link, we will let everybody know about that. Uh, Paolo is one of the premier guitar educators uh, on the scene today. And so I heartily recommend anything that you can get that, that helps you become the player that you want to be. And there's a, lot of, there's a lot of good stuff out there. There's a lot of not so good stuff out there. So we're happy to talk about good materials. I love talking about good, helpful uh, materials. Um, Cassius, thank you so much for joining us My pleasure. and uh, being a, a part of this. What a joy. Thank you for uh, being a part of this as well and then introducing us all to, to this. This was an idea that uh, um, Paulo called me you know, a month or two ago and uh, tried to uh, uh, explain this wonderful builder. And I'm, I'm so glad it worked out that we were able to have you here. It's a us. pleasure being here. So, thank you, Steve. Um, it's a joy. We are running out of time. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on a Monday night. Uh, with next live lesson maybe will not be next week because I'm going to be in uh, Spokane, Washington, working with some musicians there for the week. And uh, But we will be on probably the week after that, whatever that is, the, the 12th, 13th, something like that. We'll try and be on the week after that. If you're interested in, in supporting the work that we do, there's a PayPal link down there. There's also a... Uh, um, you can do the super chat. I haven't seen any super chats come come by, but you can. Uh, there's the PayPal link there as well. If you appreciate the lessons that we put out and have the uh, joy of helping you guys become the musicians that you want to be, uh, I love it. I love everything about it. So, thank you uh, to Groons for allowing us to be here. Uh, it is always a joy. They just have opened the place up to us uh, to do this. If ever you're in Nashville. Don't come to Nashville and not come to one of the best guitar stores on the planet. And so uh, if you're interested in checking out Groons' inventory, you can go to groon.com. You can go to guitars. To show you how fundamental they are, you can just go to guitars.com, yeah. and that gets yeah. you to this place, yeah, uh, the vintage guitar capital of the world. So uh, I saw Gary was asking about the 1966 Strat that uh, I showed on the show last uh, week. Had the wonderful opportunity to play that uh, this past uh, weekend at uh, church, and it was amazing sounding. So, so there you go. All, I love all the guitar work that we get to do. Uh, keep up the great work in your learning. Uh, your music matters, and we will see you guys next time. Thank you. <laughs>